Hi, men. How you doing? Uh, we are in Lecture 4, Life Reminders for Preaching, and I'm um, looking forward to getting those videotapes in of your revival messages, and I pray that they'll be a help and an encouragement to all of us. I want to be preached to uh, for those as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Ask the Lord to be with us as we continue these reminders. This is kind of a sermon preparation type of material that I think will be great, greatly used and, and uh, I pray very practical and helpful to you. So let's ask the Lord uh, to be with us. Father, I thank you for these men. I thank you for their calling. I, I'm sure many of them do believe that they've been called to preach. And some of them are still well, trying to find that out. And Lord, I pray that you would guide and direct them. Lord, I, I know that some of the things I say today are, are, are just kind of some principles or some practical suggestions. But Lord, I think they do have merit. And I think that they could really help the guys. Um, take what you want them to get, put it in their hearts, and may they cleave to it. And may it be a help to them. Uh, Lord, how we need these men to go out and be followers of you and be preachers of the scriptures. Uh, Lord, I think of that definition. May these men teach from a point of authority with the purpose to persuade. I pray that for them. And I pray that what's given today will help them do that more effectively. So we dedicate the class to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, just a little bit of review. Uh, we talked about number one, don't get boxed in. I think there can be different types of preaching. You can do topical. You can do contextual. I think the majority of your preaching should be expository uh, uh, preaching. What you take out is as important as what you leave in. Learn how to edit your message. And then, guys, a big part of this class is to teach you how to evaluate yourself and your preaching. You have to keep evaluating yourself. A little statement that I've used before, good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better's best. Guys, keep evaluating. You have not apprehended. You have not arrived in your preaching. I've been preaching for 40 years. Guys, I'm so far from where I want to be as a preacher. So keep evaluating yourself as well. Number four. Find a schedule that works for you. This, I think, is a really important point. Find a schedule that works for you. Um, it can, number one, it can evolve. Um, earlier in my ministry preaching, my study times were different than later. And, and what I did uh, when I pastored in Florida was different than when I pastored in Central California, uh, my schedule time. So, so it can evolve, but you need to have a schedule. Now, there's a few things on that schedule of your study for your messages that you need to have. Number one, it can evolve. Number two, something every day. Now, I know these are just suggestions, but I'm telling you. This one's got a lot to it. Remember, remember one of the um, transforming truths, uh, uh, tasted before serving it? Well, let me tell you this. There is no way possible that you're going to preach messages on Sunday, that you're preparing on Saturday, and that you're going to be able to have tasted it in your life. So every day I would do something. Now, some, some days of the week, Monday was kind of a day off, you know, when I was pastoring. Uh, maybe I'd only spend 20, 30 minutes, but I would study every day on the series or the messages that were coming up. And what that did was it was like a crock pot, a slow cooker. It kind of plugged it in and it kind of let it cook and marinate all week long. If uh, Now, I had major study times where I would study for like two, three hours on one message or whatever like that. And a couple times during the week, I had those big mega study times. But one thing I did, I went over my messages every day. That Even if it was for a short period of time, that allowed it to keep, that's where I got my illustrations. That's where I found those metaphors is because I'm studying. If you, you're just going to, you, you just maybe you're going to put 12 hours in studying on Saturday. Well, that's a good amount of time on a message. 
However, if you're just doing it the day before, there is a little bit of freshness you get from that, but there's also, you lost so much by not having that work through your life through the course of the week. So let me encourage you. Um, uh, um, it, your schedule will evolve, but something every day that at least you're going over your notes, the, your files, the passage of scripture that you're going to preach on, the topic that you're covering, you're at least bringing it up in your mind so that your mind has a chance to work on it and see things that relate to it through the course of your day. Ooh, that's good. Uh, and then I put down two big times, a long periods of two hours or plus. Uh, that's the way I did it, that there would be two long periods of study time uh, in my week. But then I, I studied every day as well. Uh, stay ahead. So I kept the file. I mean, this was so basic. And you guys would probably use it with your computer or whatever. But I actually use, you know, manila folders and files. And I had a, a, a separate little file cabinet just for my, my series of messages. So if I'm preaching in the book of Joshua on Sunday morning uh, and I read something throughout the course of the week that was going to be in Joshua chapter 10. And I'm in Joshua chapter 2. And um, I read some, I said, you know what? And I put that in the file. So when I come to chapter 10, I'll remember. Maybe it was a, a paragraph in a book about Joshua chapter 10. I'll write down the name of the book, the page. And then when I get to that, I want to go back and read that again. So I kept the file running. Maybe I'm doing a, a thing on finances. And uh, I hear a really good message or something on contentment. Well, I'll put that in. Listen to so-and-so's message on contentment before you, you know, uh, do your message on, on in your series of finances on, content, on, on finances. And one of the messages was going to be on contentment. And I heard something that would be really good. Well, I put that in the file. So when I open up the file, oh, I got to listen to that message again on contentment because it had some really good points in there that I, I can maybe use in my message now in my series on finances. So uh, stay ahead. Files for the series. Keep putting ideas in those files. Uh, find a schedule that works. Now listen to number five. Find a place to spread out. Okay, now, you guys are in the computer thing. I'm okay with that. I'm a dinosaur. I like books around me. I like a big conference table. You know what, though? Even if you're, you do all of your work on your laptop or whatever, I, I'm not opposed to that at all, and probably that's what you guys are going to do. I think you still got to have a place. You have to have a place that you maybe, you, you still can feel like you're spread out. Maybe you still have some other resources. Maybe you got a couple computers. You're looking at some a couple different things. Um, have a place um, that you can spread out. And notice the two points underneath this. No distractions, no disruptions. No distractions, no disruptions. All right. So, um, get a place. Now, for some of you guys, it may be your home. It never worked that way for me. Now, for me, I always studied at the church. Now, some people go like, oh, no. I go to church. I see so many things that got to be done. So, so it's a very individual thing. You may have a closet somewhere in your church that you can make into a little hidden den where you study. You may be able to close off your office where it is and it can be fine. But you want to go to a place that there's no disruptions and there's no distractions. Uh, you tell your secretary, can't bother. You tell your wife, honey, you can't let the kids in. This is my study time. That's why it just wasn't going to work for me at home when the kids were little. Or, and, and it never, it just never worked at home. I always found stuff at home to do where at the church I was able to block it away. It may be just the complete opposite for you. So you've got to find a place that you and God can meet. And I'm going to tell you, that will be a very special place. Um, and man, if I could be very transparent with you, if you asked me, do you miss pastoring at all, Brother Shotley? Well, yeah, there's absolutely things about pastoring I miss. If I had one, I think the greatest thing that I miss in the pastorate is that daily study alone in the Word for messages. 
And, you know, a lot of what I'm giving out right now, I, I've gotten from years of experience. But I do miss the pioneering of into the Word of God for new messages. And I, and I come up with new messages every year. But I was coming up with three new messages every week. And that just took me to a place with God that I'll never forget. You know, the tribe of Levi had different uh, boundaries, different regulations, and all of the other tribes. And man, one of the great things about ministry is what you get to do with the Lord. I don't think God loves us anymore because we're preachers, but I do think we get to know Him better because we are preachers in our study of God's Word. And so find a place. All the places throughout my ministry where I studied for my messages are, to me, holy ground. Those were special places and special times. So find a place to spread out. No distractions, no disruptions. Number six, keep going over the 10 truths until they're a part of your preaching. Come on, guys, I really mean that. There was a reason why we spent four lessons on that. You need to constantly go, oh, hey, was that running narrative? Did I drop the truths in while I was telling the story? Was there any transparency? Am I doubting myself or am I the hero of all my stories? Am I describing my struggles? Do people know that I'm going through things too? Am I discerning and what's appropriate or not? I need to become more transparent. Man, I need to start defining words. I need to start, I, I'm preaching all of these things and I'm not defining in anything. Is it biblical? Is it balanced? Is it brief? Am I practicing the definition? Am I teaching from a point of authority with the purpose to persuade? I preached five messages in a row and I haven't had an invitation. Okay, something's wrong with that. You ought to be persuading them to always make a decision. Um, am I preaching to the conscience? Is it specific? Does the conscience, their hearts are being stirred, their mind is being built up, but am I going for their conscience? Are they leaving? I've got to change something in my life. Or I'm li or, or comforting their conscience as well. Am I using metaphors? Are there word pictures in, in my messages? Are there passion points? Can people walk away from my preaching and go, these are my two passion points um, that I have and that mean something to me? Um, all of these need to continue to be developed in your preaching. Don't leave the 10 truths. Number seven, never be satisfied. I kind of hit this before, so I won't take a long time on this. But guys, good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is better and your better is best. Don't think that you've arrived or be satisfied. Um, now, number eight, I'm going to go with this. Number eight is the 24-hour principle. Now, this is a, um, I, I mean, I heard this from a coach, okay? The winningest coach, I think he just passed away not uh, some uh, just a few months ago. His name is Don Shula. He coached the Baltimore Colts when the Colts were in Baltimore, and he coached the Miami Dolphins. And uh, he was the coach of the only undefeated team in the history of the NFL. He was the win for many years. I don't think he is still today, but I think he was or is still now the winningest coach in the NFL. And Don Shula had a 24-hour principle. And here's what it was. 24-hour principle with message. Enjoy it and then move on. And then move on. Enjoy it. Don't, do savor the wins. By the way, learn from the losses and move on from those. If it was just like, man, that was the worst message ever. Okay, find out why, evaluate, and then move on from it. And so Don Shula called it the 24-hour principle. After a game, after a Sunday game, Monday, we either savored the victory or learned from the defeat, and Tuesday we were back on track for the next week. I think that's important, guys. I think it is important to thank God for the victories. God, that, that message yesterday, you used it in the life. I think it's good to savor that and to, and to taste that and to enjoy that, how God used you. But you got to move on. Tuesday, it's a new week. Let's get going. Um, maybe maybe Sunday was a bad day and there was a lot of things in your message. You put too much in. You didn't take enough out. You didn't do this or that or the other. I think you need to learn from that. But I'm telling you what, Tuesday, you're done with it. It's time to move on. 
and, and you go on. I call it the 24-hour principle of messages. Um, I think you can find it to be in a great help to you. Number nine, you can never ask too many questions about a passage. Uh, I think we're going to do one lesson um, in the video um, about just kind of going through a passage of Scripture or whatever, but you can never ask too many questions. Now, you may ask questions that you don't come up with answers. Man, I did that every time I ever studied. I came up with questions I, I, I couldn't find answers to, but a lot of them I did, and that meant so much. Never stop asking questions about your message, about the passage you're studying, about the topic that you're studying. You can never ask too many questions about a passage. And then number 10, commentaries after personal study. Now, Brother Shetler, do you ever use commentaries? Every message I preach, I use commentaries. However, I like to do all of my personal research first. And I'm going to show you in a couple lessons here uh, a little bit more about that in, uh, I think, about two more lessons down the road. Um, but do I use commentaries? Yes. Matter of fact, the most important books in my, in my study are not topical books on certain topics, but they're commentaries. I definitely would go back and read and look at the commentaries. Am I heading in the right direction? Has anyone else ever preached or thought what I'm going to preach? I think there's a little of accountability there. Commentaries were huge to me, but I didn't do the commentaries until after I did the personal study and allowed God to speak to my own heart. Um, so let that be a help to you. Hey, I think these 10 life reminders for preaching could be really helpful to you. The next lesson we do is going to be on devotions and how to have your devotion, or not how to have your devotions, how to give a devotional. And then after that, I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, sermon prep and taking a passage of scripture and walking through it. I pray it'll be a help to you. All right, guys, we'll see you at the next lesson.